Guys, welcome back to the bluegrass on this beautiful, I mean absolutely stunning February day. It's about 40 degrees out here. It's just been a super day. Uh, kennel is just full of fun little puppies that are here for this rotation of training. Uh, the other day we had made a casual conversation video about these kangles or congles, whatever you want to call them. And I was a little jacked up on coffee <laughs> and so I know I kind of rambled and repeated myself. So a bunch of people sent me emails and, and asked me, you know, kind of some specific questions as to what it's been like so far to have this dog at my kennel and uh, you know take her through my normal training progression uh, so what we did earlier uh, you know how I like to do things I like to build my basic vocabulary and uh, get my physical skills down pat at my kennel on my small challenges course before I go out into an open environment full of unpredictable distractions okay so we're gonna cut right now from from being out in the field uh, to our earlier work. I'll show you me working the dog and my 13 year old son working the dog and my six year old daughter. And once we got her obedience down pat, then we were able to start bringing her out on the farm. And we're just gonna follow her around while I'm working this other dog so that you can kind of see, uh, you know, what her basic, uh, you know, genetic predispositions are uh, as it relates to hanging out with you in an open air environment. Uh, now, I'm not going to be bossing this dog around. I'm not going to tell her. These dogs actually, they don't do real well with being told what to do. So uh, having a having a Kangle, a Congo, a Congo Shepherd dog, an Anatolian Shepherd, any of these dogs, guys, you have to keep in mind that they were bred to have a lot of autonomy. And so you, all you need is some good, solid, basic obedience. You need to be able to call them. You need to be able to tell them no you need to be you know they need to kind of you know like be respectful of a leash and you need to make sure they're well socialized but mainly the big thing with these guys is you have to manage them properly and make sure that they fit into the environment that you take them into okay so we'll get started right now all right guys i'm a pretty small person and so sometimes it can be hard for you to get a good objective understanding of how large a dog is they all look big in perspective to me uh, so i broke out a yardstick for you and uh, we'll just kind of give you some quick measurements so you know a yardstick's 36 inches obviously okay move her head out this way a little bit georgie okay so that's about how tall she is uh, now you can see about how long she is we'll put the yardstick up by her head give you some kind of perspective on how big her head is. Very nice. Now, let's show them, cameraman, some big old teeth. Look at those big old teeth. Like if you're a wolf or a jackal or a bear or a thief, you don't want any part of those big old teeth. You know, good, very nice dog. Oh, good girl. Come on, you can do it. There you go, easy. Come on, come on, let's go this way. Oh, don't pay attention to that little dog. Come on, come on, up, up, up. Very nice. Up, up. Very nice. Now, easy. Concentrate on what you're doing. Easy. Very nice. Easy. Oh, my gosh. Let's show them how graceful you are. Up, up. Oh, watch your step. Very nice. Good girl. Let's wait. Very nice, easy. Now, up, up, up. Pause for the down elevator. Very nice. Up, up the steps. Oh my gosh. Oh, get excited. Very nice. Now, wait for the cameraman to get in position. Very good, easy. Now, let's get excited again. Come on, come on. Up, up, up. Oh my gosh. Now slow down and easy, concentrate. This is a tough one. Watch your feet and wait. Think about where you are. Now easy on the way down. Very nice. Don't pay attention to those dogs. Up, 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 up. Oh, you're so smart. You're so smart for a big girl. Up, very nice. Up, 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 come on, come on, concentrate. Up, come on, up. Oh, up the little A-frame. Come on, you can do it. Wait at the apex. Easy on the way down. Oh, you're almost done. Very nice girl. You're gonna show all these other dogs that big dogs are smart too. Very nice. All right. Okay, come on. Up, 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 up. Good girl. Now sit and stay there for a while. All right, cameraman. Give that dog a once around.
Perfect. Perfect. Good girl. Uh, if you want to lay down, that's okay with Uncle Stoney because I know it's hard for a big old dog to stay sitting for a long time. You did great. Oh, what do you think, No Dave? Very nice. Okay, George. Okay, so here's George, my 13-year-old son, working Rhea. And uh, you'll notice that uh, like he goes to walk in her and she's always kind of looking off, seeing what these other dogs do. That's supernatural, guys, for this kind of dog. They're not border collies. They're not retrievers. You know, they're big dogs that are bred to like keep an eye on things and make sure that uh, there's order in their environment. Up, up, easy. Pause right there, Georgie. Make it easy on the way down. Now watch this dog. Look, look at the way she transitions, right, from, from going uphill to downhill. And you notice how that was real easy for her? These dogs are remarkably uh, adept at using that big body. They're very athletic. They have great natural proprioception. Up, up, up. Good. Easy. Wait. Very nice. Now easy on the way down. Down's always harder than going up. Now look, Rhea's super patient with that little dog getting in her way. Up, up. Very nice. Very nice. Up, up, up. This part's kind of hard on them, Georgie, so be patient. Good. Keep her on track. Don't let her fall off of their weight. Very nice. Good. Now easy on the way down. Very nice. And then hop up, tell her in advance what you want her to do. Good, hop, hop. Perfect. Easy on the way down. Good, good. Now right here, if she starts to get, you'll notice this with these dogs. If you do things with them too many times in a row, they'll get a little bored and so you have to kind of be insistent with them, you know? And that's the deal with these livestock guardian dogs. You have to set realistic goals. Turn around here and come up the A-frame, Georgie. You have to set realistic goals. And you have to be consistent, and you have to be persistent, and you have to be patient, and you have to understand that you know a lot of times the things that you're asking out of them, uh, it's kind of you know kind of working against their natural predispositions. Like right there, what you just see, what you're seeing right there, is there's a dog over there in the background, and they're kind of squabbling a little bit. And you see how her posture kind of came up. She started looking over there in the corner, you know. Now here, the same dog comes up. Now that's a dog just got here. And so he kind of aggravates everybody. Rhea keeps a very close eye on him, you know, because that new white dog kind of kind of humping everybody, and and uh, so they snap at him a lot. And whenever there's any kind of squabble, Rhea is the first one to want to go over there. Now, okay, down the A-frame, Georgie. Now we can handle that here because we're used to dealing with lots of different kinds of dogs. But like uh, this is why, if if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna have one of these dogs, you have to be very careful, guys, because conflict draws these dogs like a light bulb draws a moth. There you go. Now put her on up on the table, Georgie. All the way up on the table, and you're going to make her sit there. Now, she might not want to sit down because that poodle's behind her, kind of sniffing her, and he's been wanting to try to, try to like, take liberties with her personal space, and so Georgie's going to have to be very insistent on making her sit and stay. Now, when we make these dogs stay, guys, we don't really draw much of a distinction between sit and down. Uh, that's a big old body to try to maintain a sitting posture. So most of the time what happens is we're just perfectly happy when we tell them to sit or lay down if they do either one. You know, again, like being successful comes from having met expectations. Having met expectations comes from setting, uh, you know, clear and consistent goals. And that's pretty common right there. She's wanting to get up and see those other dogs. George is going to have to go back over there and be, in sit, be insistent with her. And you can see, see how she's like, I don't want to sit down. George has to just like take the right mental uh, attitude and show her that, uh, you know, he's in charge of what's, what's going on here. Now we're going to watch Charlotte, my six-year-old daughter, uh, work Rhea with her basic obedience. And you'll notice that Charlotte gets going in a lot of directions. <laughs> and so a dog has to be pretty dang patient to work with a six-year-old child. And this is going to be a perfect case of that. We're going to see if uh, <laughs> we're going to see just what the limits of a Kangle's uh, patience levels are. Very nice, Charlotte. Now easy on your way around. Tell those other dogs to get out of the way. The big girl's coming through. Perfect, very nice. Now easy, I'll come help you with this one. Okay, so up the, up, 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 up. Get her to that pause point and kind of wait. Good, there we go. Now you go on down. Perfect, and then hop up the steps. Very nice, good. Up the high dog walk, hop, up, hop, hop. Very nice, that's perfect, you're doing great. 
Now easy on the way down. Now get her in a good line, just like with your horse on this barrel. We gotta take a good line. Come on, hup, 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 hup. There you go, give her a little bit of direction. Hup, hup, talk to her, tell her she's doing a good job. Very nice. Now redirect her, there you go. Get her, get her lined up on the ATV ramps. Very nice. Now we're gonna wait right there for just a second, wait. Very nice. Now easy on the way down, make sure she takes all her steps. That's perfect, perfect, perfect. Tell her to hop, take a good line. Up, up, right here. Good, let me fix your leash for you. Good, goes like this, there you go. Now give her time to get around the corner. Go ahead and go around with her. Now you're gonna have to lead her off there, make sure she takes the, the proper angle off of those blocks. And you're gonna get you a little easy, and then a hup. Easy, little pull. There you go, now a hup, now a hup. Very good. Go ahead, be, you're gonna have to be insistent. There you go to the second one. Good, hup, 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 be insistent. Third one, hup, 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 be insistent. Now, good. Now come around to the, there we go. Come to the dog A-frame, very nice. Very good. <laughs> oh, tell him, say big girl coming through. Big girl coming through. <laughs> now just keep going. She, there you go. Good. Very nice. Now go to the next table over there. There you go. Big steps, big steps, big steps. Hup, hup, hup. Very nice. That's perfect. That's great. Now to the exam table. Oh, you want to do one more table? Okay. All right. That's good. Go ahead. This is fine. Do one more table there. Hup, hup, hup. Now what you'll notice, come here cameraman. I'll show you something. Now the reason we didn't do this, you wouldn't think, like so with those labs, notice that there's not a pad on this one, okay? So we've got a dog here right now that's tearing up the pads on my line tamer stand. And uh, for the labs and, and uh, uh, some of the other kinds of dogs, that little bit of environmental difference doesn't matter. Uh, but these dogs, even though they're big, strong dogs, they're very aware of small, subtle changes in their environment. And so Rhea does not like uh, putting her feet on this line tamer stand yet because she wasn't originally socialized to this uh, surface. There's these little ridges on there that she doesn't like. So I'm going to help Charlotte and watch. This dog will probably jump that whole line tamer stand. Up, 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 up. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Now watch. This one has this one has the pad and she steps on it perfectly. Very nice. Okay, go ahead and go over this one. And then we'll go to the exam table. That's right. Up, up. Oh, come on. Very nice. <clears throat> Very nice. Now go over there and get, go up the step and get onto the, to the exam table. Good. Perfect. Now see if you can get her to sit and stay. Give her that Darth Vader hand. Tell her to stay. Lay your leash up on the exam table so it's not pulling on her. Perfect. Good dog. Good job. That's perfect. All right. Now get up there and give her a hug. Tell her you appreciate it. Oh, perfect. Now we'll go out back. That's great, Charlotte. Oh, oh, that was great. Oh, very nice dogs. We have a poodle. We have a labradoodle. We have an Aussie doodle. We have a lab. We have a shepherd mix. Oh, we got all. We got an American bulldog around here somewhere. Oh, oh, we can just sit down out here and play with them for a second. Oh my gosh. Oh, let's see if we can get Rhea over here in the mix. Rhea, what you doing? And then, <laughs> here she comes. Look how she, hey, look at Rhea. Look how she just kind of lumbers around. Just one big step, then another big step. She's like Petunia the pig. She's very much like Petunia the pig. Oh, give her some love, Charlotte. Oh. Oh, here comes the hugger monster. Oh, the hugger monster. Oh. <laughs> you know who the hugger monster is, is Mr. No Name. All right, turn around this way a little bit. Let me see, get on the other side of her. Oh, there we go. Now look, so she's being pretty patient with these other dogs, and we really appreciate yeah. that, right? Because yeah. a big dog like this, if she, if she wasn't very patient, that'd be a lot of trouble, wouldn't it? It'd be hard to, hard to get her squared away. Back up there, cameraman, and you notice how this dog, again, those, quit now. 
the, these other dogs started kind of squabbling a little bit. She went right over there to see what was going on. Kind of swing around there that way, cameraman. Just kind of watch her, see what she's like. Now this is Q, uh, about a year old poodle, and uh, he thinks he wants to romance <laughs> this big dog. So he picks at her, he snaps at her and tries to hump her some. And uh, if I wasn't out here, <laughs> I would not leave her out here with these other dogs because once she's had her fill, then that's the end of the discussion. And she's so powerful and so good at wrestling and fighting that any one of these dogs that was to you know, push her over into that red zone, uh, they, they would greatly regret it. But as you can see, you know, like she can hang out with us. Uh, she can even put up with old aggravating Frenchmen like this guy here or a little Australian like this guy here. So we're all, all in all, we're pretty happy with her progress and she's been pretty easy to manage. Now we'll hop on the ATV and we'll go out back and uh, kind of show you, you know, um, how she likes farm life. Marty. All right, Georgie, now what happened is the other night when I came out here, they all shot down this little lane here and then posted up right there along the creek. Uh, okay, so what's happened here, guys? Uh, what we're doing today, of course, we're doing a little bit of nose work with Mr. No Name, a little bit of retrieving, uh, but we got uh, Rhea out here because we are doing something that's uh, you know kind of related to what she's bred to do. I'm pretty much a live and let live kind of guy. Uh, so I'm pretty pro coyote. I like coyotes. I like wolves. I like them right up to the point to where they start getting in the way of uh, me making a living or keeping my own stuff safe, right? So uh, we've had coyotes out here for a long time, but they're starting to get a little full of themselves. And the other night, uh, I caught some of them uh, trying, to, trying to get under my fence. Now my fence has a special underground uh, barrier, so that it's pretty hard. But coyotes are, you know, they're good at jumping, right? So I don't want them jumping in my fence either. And uh, so uh, I, I knew what they were doing. I saw them on the camera and I came out here and I went to chasing them and we got right around here and a whole bunch of them, one real big one, just stopped right down there and looked at me, you know, like, what are you gonna do about it? <laughs> well, before I could do anything about it, they were gone. And so uh, now, so me and George are out here laying out our, uh, laying out our ambush spots uh, so we can get these coyotes back in line. Um, now, while we're out here, I got my trusty old single shot shotgun. Hey, George, come up here and show them what you've got. Oh, now so George, he's just now getting into the business and so he's learning stuff. Uh, I got him this cool Everly stock bag just like mine and uh, George is learning about protection dogs. He's learning about these livestock guardian dogs and then George, oh, he's got him a nice rifle here. Oh, show him what that is there, cameraman. Guys, this is a Steyr uh, Scout rifle. It is uh, designed by Colonel Jeff Cooper. It's really awesome. Got an integral bipod on it. It's a 308. It's got a ching sling, which ah, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about the ching, ching sling, but uh, it's kind of fun to fool around with, especially if, if you have the book, The Art of the Rifle, you know. So we're killing a lot of birds with one stone out here. We're, we're out here doing some, uh, doing some uh, retriever work. Uh, we're out here doing some man raising work. My daughter, uh, she wants to start a fire, so we're doing some daughter raising work. And we're showing you what these old kangles do, okay? So we're just gonna keep walking around here and uh, you just kind of keep an eye on her and notice that she doesn't get too far away from us until we post up. And uh, then once we probably start building a fire or something, she'll go get her a spot where she can kind of keep an eye on everything and she'll just sit there. Come on, Rhea. <laughs> Oh, he's a good dog. Yeah, he wants to Yeah, he wants to go over there because we've been we've been firing the dummy launcher and all his dummies. He's been having to go over there and look at them and uh, find them with just his nose. Hey, Dad, remember that time we went into the dried up creek? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he loves going into the creek. Sure. You know what? So, Georgie, once they posted up down here, then they kind of hit that creek and they went on up there. But 
<clears throat> we got a little bit of footage of them. And they, had, they have a tendency to come out of that creek, hit that little path there, make their way up that side of the hill. So what I'm thinking is uh, like we can set a call out here and then we'll have, uh, you know, from the top of this uh, little ridge line here, we'll have a, you know, good angles of view both directions. All right, so you clear on what we're doing? Yeah. Okay, all right. All right, we can go up there and build your fire now. All right, so as we're walking up here, what you'll see is uh, Rhea will probably end up being in front of us. And uh, like she walks with us some of the time, but a whole lot of the time she kind of gets out and gets in front and leads the way. She'll probably get past my cameraman here in a minute and that's okay. Uh, it's hard to keep up with her. But kind of how these dogs are is once they learn the pattern of where you're going, uh, then they'll go ahead and get out in front of you and kind of lead the way. And a lot of times what you'll notice is uh, she's smelling all the bushes and, and uh, looking in all the little holes in the side of the creek bank and the hill and stuff. And that just comes from the, you know, thousands of uh, generations of, of breeding where these dogs, the job has literally been bred into them, you know. So that's the neat thing about these livestock guardian dogs. When you get them, you just, they're kind of plug and play. You know, once you, you know, if you have a, once you get an established group of them, then like raising the next group, it's just a matter of getting them born healthy and letting them hang out with the older dogs. And they do great at that kind of stuff. But I can pretty much come out here and you can see there's all these mowed paths in these fields around here. I can pretty much come out here and I can work 10 or 12 puppies. We can do four wheeler stuff. We can uh, do dummy launcher stuff. And I can count at any given moment on this dog at being one of about four or five key places uh, on this property. She likes to kind of get up on the hills so she can look around and see what's going on. And then every so often, you know, like I'll see her get up and move into a direction. Now she's uh, done a very good job of internalizing kind of the, uh, the parameters of my property. So she doesn't go too far. But like if my neighbors are over here doing something, she'll get up off this hill and she'll walk over there. And as long as they're moving kind of slow, then she just looks at them. So I'll watch her, I'll get up, I'll go and I'll, and I'll know my neighbor's over there doing something. If like they make a loud noise or if they start moving over here to where we are, you know, or if they, you know, fire up a piece of equipment, then she'll kind of bow up a little bit and she'll give them a big woof, you know. But if anybody ever surprises her, uh, which is kind of hard to do because she's pretty observant, then she does what's called a bluff charge. So she'll be like, boo, 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 boo. hey, and that scares everybody. It's like I said in my other video, you know, people come to my kennel and they're like, they think the dogs are cool. So they, you know, dog, they like dogs. They ain't scared of dogs. And uh, they'll see her and they'll be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? She'll be like, woof. And they'll go, oh, you love me. And she'll go, boo, 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 boo. And they just turn around and get back in their truck. It's a, <laughs> it's a really funny thing. You know, but this is about what she does. See, she's over there smelling. No telling what she's smelling over there, right? But she's cataloging that. She comes out here and she takes these big, you know, big deep smells. She makes these real like deliberate walks and at a casual pace. So at first it doesn't look like she's doing much, but you'll start to notice she smells the same spots every time. She looks down these little gullies the same way every time. So she has cataloged in her mind how this property is supposed to be. And anything that's out of the ordinary, she's drawn to it. She just goes right to it. And she's like, hey, look, I'm gonna, you know, she, she doesn't even look back at you. She just takes off. Like say something's going on over here. She just gets up, she takes off walking. A lot of times she's so tall, she'll find her at you know, a high spot. She'll just sit down and watch. And so you know about where she's watching, something's going on. And then if you see her get up, her posture kind of goes forward, ears go up, she hackles up a little bit, then you know that something is out of the ordinary, at least from her perspective. Super, it, I tell you, it really kind of makes you feel uh, pretty secure, doesn't it, George? Yeah. You know? So like if I let my little girl come out here in the back field by herself, you know, like, well, I mean, we live in a super safe area, but yeah, you, know, you got little girls, you gotta, you gotta be careful. So if me and George are down there in a the creek or something, as long as like Rhea is up here, uh, or one of my Malinois is up here with Charlotte, we don't even think anything about it. All right, let's go start a fire and see what Rhea does. <laughs> All right, we're gonna build a big fire. Yeah. Dang, nice. Yeah. Well, uh, we take the dry wood and uh, we make this little bit of a fire here and then it'll dry it up as it goes. 
what they say guys if it uh, doesn't snap put it back right because good dry wood snaps Good, put it on there then. Perfect. You know I love the smell of smoke. You love the smell of smoke? Good, I do too. What we're doing is we're getting all these uh, limbs out of here and cleaning it up. So when we have visitors, it snaps. dang, if it snaps, it goes on the fire. We get all this cleaned up so that when we have visitors uh, and they come back, we can have a nice little marshmallow roast we could cook some steaks oh and not worry about them tripping <laughs> oh last year when uh, we had some people come out i you know i kind of forget that not everybody has grown up in this kind of environment oh and uh, we had some people tripping on the undergrowth and getting dirty and stuff and so now what we're doing as springtime is mo we're moving into springtime we plan on having a lot of company uh, we're going to get all this undergrowth uh, out from under here, make it easy for everybody to walk. So just anything that's laying around that can get under your feet, just pick up all these little pieces. Uh, well, like this. Get this one, okay? Get a bunch of those. Yep. Yep. We're we're doing two. We're killing two birds with one stone. We're having a fun fire time. And we're cleaning up our property, being good stewards of the land. Oh, this fire's starting to catch, Georgie. We're going to have us a big bonfire here before long. This is the chumpster, chirpiest dog I've seen. The deer? Yeah. Right on oh yeah. Line. Okay, I see it right on that wood line there. Yeah. Oh, okay. What uh, is the wood line? The wood line that just means you know where the field where the mowed part of the field starts meeting the trees? That's the wood line. Yep. Okay. So guys, see that's what I'm talking about. Like uh, we're over there uh, trying to clear out some underbrush and burn it. And uh, like uh, this dog kind of wanders away from the fire over here to this, uh, there's a, the American wire fence on one side of my property. And George is like, I wonder what she's looking at. And he came over here to see. And so then I came over here to see what they were looking at, right? And when it turns out it's a deer. And um, that's one of the things you'll notice with these dogs is like sometimes they're just kind of sitting around, you know, and you'll just see them like, like kind of set up a little bit and their ears will go forward. And uh, yeah, they're, not, uh, they're not like alerting on anything. They're not telling you there's a threat in the area or not yet. And what's happening is they've noticed something. Their senses, as far as it relates to changes in the environment, are remarkably acute. Okay, so nine times out of ten, if this dog sees something, okay, if you'll just follow her, you'll see something too. Sometimes it's a groundhog, sometimes it's a turkey buzzard, sometimes it's a, a neighbor's dog, sometimes it's a neighbor, you know, today it was a deer. And uh, that's how they are. I mean, all you have to do is kind of let them post up and then watch. If something draws their attention, if you'll just follow them and you'll look carefully, 99 out of 100 times, you're going to see something that you didn't notice first. All righty, now keeping with the... <coughs> questions that was asking me if this dog can do the stuff the other dogs do. Uh, we'll come out here and do the wood pile challenge with her. See if I can get her up here. Rhea, come on. Can you come up the wood pile? Might have to get all the way over on this other side. <laughs> well, okay. There's just another one of a million reasons that uh, all dogs want to be labs and all labs want to be black. Of course, my dog jumped right up on the wood pile <laughs> like it wasn't a problem at all. Oh, come on, Rhea. Can you do it? Come on. Rhea, come on. Oh my gosh, you can do it. So she needed a little bit more encouragement, but looky there. Dang, tell me that's not agile. Now I was trying to make that point earlier. Oh, up on the small challenges course. But uh, you know, the small challenges course is kind of set up to be safe and have pretty good footing. Uh, now out here, this is just a bunch of stacked up wood. Go on dog. And look, Rhea just got, gets up here like a master uh, brush pile challenge expert. She looks good, doesn't she? Dang, you know, like I'm telling you guys, these dogs most certainly are not for everyone, and I'm not in any way advocating you running out and getting one. 
Uh, it's just that uh, they are really neat uh, for what they do. And if you like a dog uh, for having the attributes that these dogs have, uh, they're remarkable. I mean, they're really kind of fun to be around. And uh, it kind of takes a lot of pressure off you as a dog trainer because I know that my influence uh, on this dog, so it's only a little bit, right? So I have to meet her in the middle. Like with a lot of these dogs, you know, I joke around about liking the labs. Well, the reason I like them is because they're so easy to influence. And I can pretty much just set my agenda with these labs and most of the dogs that come out here and everything just progresses at my agenda's rate, you know? And uh, then when this, this girl came out here, <laughs> we had to have a meeting and uh, come to a collaborative timeline on that agenda because she said, Stoney, uh, I'm going to do this stuff, but uh, I'm going to do it at my own pace. And I just kind of had to say, well, okay, all right, well, we'll do it on your pace then. And uh, remarkably, I mean, she's been here a little while, but remarkably, she's met all of our expectations. And uh, with my adjusted timeline, we've met all our benchmarks, uh, you know, relatively quickly. Good dog.